A month into the season, there's already some trade talk surrounding the Nashville Predators goaltending, and not just UC Soros either. We'll break down the rumors, debate whether it's too early for a trade, plus look at the Preds' matchup against the Anaheim Ducks tonight on the Locked On Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Predators podcast your first listen of the day every single day. We are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I want to start out with a special hello to our loyal Locked On Pred heads out there, the everydayers who tune into every single show. We love you guys. We appreciate appreciate hard word to say two every eight, time two days in a row i've messed it up we appreciate the love and support you give us week after week i'm nick morgan i am a writer at penalty box radio and i have a partner in crime you do i'm ann kimmel i'm a writer at the hockey news a partner in crime that is always ready to correct my mispronounced words <laughs> uh today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. make every moment more Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150. If your team wins, visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. And it is five months until the trade deadline. Yep. And we already got some trade talk. And here we are talking about the Voldemort of topics for me, the thing I hate to talk about the most, but you can't ignore it. I mean, 14 games into the season and already there are rumors a swirling about the Nashville Predators and trade talks. And it's just kind of been a perfect storm in different places in the NHL to kind of create this just nightmare scenario for me. Yeah. Trade talk to me, it's like, I love like free agent frenzy. I love trade deadline. Um, But mostly when my team is doing good, because then it's like, who are we going to get? Who are like some of the best teams going to land? And then it's like, your team is selling. And it's like, well, wait, I don't, I don't like this. Yes. This this isn't fair. This sucks. Yes. What, What happened to the random, just giving a first round pick for a bevy of top players? Yeah, it's it. You know what? I think last trade deadline, we're all still kind of emotionally scarred from the last trade deadline where it was just they were out the door before we even had a chance to say goodbye. So it does feel a little bit early to be talking about it. But here we are. I mean, this is not just something you and I have come up with. There is there are voices whispering around the league about this kind of stuff. There's been speculation. And so it's time to just address the Voldemort straight on. Yeah. Uh, I think I was emotionally scarred from the having to do a recap every single day for, for the locked on NHL channel thinking I'm finally like, all right, we got the, we got the at home news out there. That's, that's it. And then poof. There's another. There, there, there goes Mikhail Granlin 24 yes. hours later. Uh, so let's get into why we're talking about it today. And that is the Predators goaltending. Uh, now, a lot of this has come from the Edmonton side yes. of things uh, because the Edmonton goaltending situation, not great. No. It's kind of been terrible for a long time. So a lot of people have been talking. It started – with them saying, okay, well, the predator or the Oilers should check to make sure that UC Saros is on the market because that's you know the, the franchise goalie that we desperately need. It's been right. one of the best goalies in the NHL for the past few years. Uh, that has evolved into you know them saying you know we had like Pierre LeBron, Elliot Friedman, and a couple others be like, okay, well, UC Saros is probably not in the trade block. The Predators really don't want to trade him. Uh, But then Kevin Lankinen might be available to some teams. The Predators might, you know, have some ideas to trade Lankinen. So there, we got got the Predators' two goaltenders mentioned in trade whispers so far, or at least like trade-centric conversations. Right. And then... I mean, dude. Ryan Ryan Rashog from TSN uh, mentioned that Yaroslav Askarov 
should be somebody the Oilers call on. Uh, saying it's like, well, if the if the Oilers really want to build, you know, why don't you get the young goalie, Askarov, as, as it stands right now, is one of the top goalies in the entire AHL. Had a very good rookie year last year. Obviously, 11th overall pick regarded as maybe one of the top two, three goaltending prospects in the entire world right now. So right. why not start from the ground floor and get somebody that you're going to build um, up? And no, no one really denied it. Like it was silence, it, awkward yeah. silence, yeah. y'all. Pierre, Pierre LeBron said uh, it, it'd be risky, but yeah, sure. Like you know, that's so. There we go. And the the Predators' top three goaltenders in the organization, uh, all linked to the same team, uh, yeah. in various trade chatter. So yeah. what do you make of this? I am not generally by nature a paranoid person. I am not by nature a conspiracy theorist. I take things at face value. But this, this in in terms of my hockey life, has me a little bit spun up. There's a couple of reasons for it. I think there are really big implications for the Nashville Predators. No matter which one of these three goaltending options you put into some sort of trade speculation, I think that there are big implications for the Predators. Also, I just don't like it. And, you know, you and I had talked about this last week, you know, because in uh, Milwaukee, Troy Grosnick got a couple of starts. They called up Gustav's Gringles from the ECHL, from the Atlanta Gladiators. And he is having a great start to his season. The Atlanta Gladiators are killing it, y'all. You need to be checking them out because we've got several of our prospects there. And they are off to their best start in franchise history. So, you know, in, you know, under normal circumstances, I would be like, hey, you know, they want to get another eye on Gringles in Milwaukee. No big deal, whatever. But then this trade talk starts. And then my, did my paranoia not kick up just a titch (laughs) last week, Nick? I mean, I've. It's real. I was like, what's going on, Nick? Have you heard anything, Nick? What is going on? Where's Yaroslav Iskara? Yeah. So it's, yeah. This and, is, and we still haven't gotten an answer. We still don't I, know. Askarov yeah. was, was not in the lineup those past two games. Even Eric Dene, our, our prospects expert, goes, yeah, no, no clue. No idea. So, yeah, this is a topic that under, you know, under normal circumstances, I kind of try to avoid it. If we have to talk about it, we talk about it. I take it with a grain of salt. This has, you know, this has Pepto-Bismol written all over it for me because a lot of different people are saying, here's a really good fit. And a lot of times when you've got some of the people saying, here's a really good fit, it's, it's, because it's a really good fit. So there's a lot to weigh out. Edmonton's got a lot going on right now um, and a lot for Nashville, but it's a little unnerving for me. I mean, you say you love trade talk, but but w- what does all of this mean to you as you just sort of hear as an overview, the speculation? Well, let's, let's say something off the bat to kind of quell things. Uh, as we mentioned, a lot of this seems to be coming from Edmonton. There has been nothing Nothing out there in any of this talk that said, oh, the Preds are shopping UC Saros. The Preds are shopping Yaroslav Askarov. This is all just kind of, you know, Edmonton media personalities or reporters being like, if I were the Oilers, the Predators are who I would call for this. So there has been nothing tangible. Um, It sounds like the Predators don't want to trade UC Saros. Uh, it Ever. sounds like that was sort of the decision last year because right. UC Saros was in a lot of talk about, oh, if you're a team that needs goaltending, like you call the Preds, call the Preds. And it sounds like the Predators really rebuffed uh, a lot of that. And, and Barry Trotz kind of buckled down saying, yeah. like, oh, I don't I don't want to trade UC Saros right now. He's somebody you want to build around, right. uh, which is the right call. There's also been, uh, you know, nothing tangible right now that says the Preds are shopping uh, uh, Askarov. Uh, mm-hmm. That was different at the draft. There are reports out there that the Preds were looking to use Askarov as a chip uh, to maybe move into the top four or five in the draft. 
Right. Um, but that's that to me is different than just, hey, we, we have a piece available. Uh, if you give us a first round pick, you can have, you know, our, our star prospect goaltender. That seemed more like, no, 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 this is the deepest draft we've had in a while. There's a franchise changing player in that top five. We are using our top prospect for a very specific reason. That yeah. seems different than me. So I think we need to quell maybe the the actual oh there's something imminent like there's a trade about to happen like it's going to happen at the deadline deadline i think we need to quell some of that talk but there's a different conversation here Anne, uh and that is the timing of mm. this and would you if you're the nashville predators make a trade like this that's a conversation we're going to have in just one second. But first, I want to mention today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Uh, I had a friend recently that went down to Mexico for a bachelorette weekend. Uh, And while she was there, she got extremely sick. Uh, Very, very sick. Ruined the whole bachelorette weekend, but that's not part of the main story here. Uh, The point is she just didn't really know what to do. Uh, the, The resort doctor was, you know, a resort doctor. Uh, she didn't want to, you know, kind of test it and go to, you know, a hospital in a foreign country. Uh, so she was a little bit stuck. This is where Jace Medical comes in handy uh, because Jace is tailor made for situations just like this. They have something called the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life saving antibiotics for emergency use. All it takes to get a Jace case is to fill out a simple online form and in some cases, Jump on a quick call with one of their board certified physicians. You get ongoing care from our physicians on any treatment related questions and they're doctor curated, doctor recommended. You can take those life-saving antibiotics anywhere, whether you're traveling for work, whether you're traveling for pleasure, if you're going you know, to a long weekend in the Smokies a couple hours away, or if you're traveling overseas, the point is you're never caught unprepared. And also right now, Jace has a one-year supply on ED medications as well. So they have generics for Cialis, Viagra, or Rivadio. So you can add that into the arsenal if you want to. So if you or someone you love would love to get some peace of mind by having a year supply of any daily med ready to go wherever you go, go to jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you. Remember to use promo code locked on for $20 off your purchase. Again, that is jacemedical.com. All right, Ann, uh, we are continuing some of the trade discussions that have popped up surrounding UCO Sar- or UC Saros, uh, Kevin Lankinen, and Yaroslav Askarov. Um, the, the other thing uh, is the timing. Yes, and it is November. It is a month into the season and a month into what feels like the first year of a rebuild uh, for the Nashville Predators. So the question I ask is, it's too early to do anything right now, right? I think that it is too early to do anything right now. I understand that the Predators are not off to the start that they would have liked to have kicked off this kind of reset with. But if you look at the Predators games, some of these games were one goal games, you know, with an empty netter. So it's not that the Nashville Predators are in tank land, you know, and I say this with love, but they are not the San Jose Sharks, said with love, J.D. Young. You know, oh, J.D. Love, J.D. loves where the Sharks are right now. He loves the tank He does. We're, we're not there. We're not there yet. So while the Predators have not started the season where they want to be, let's face it, they are at the bottom of the Central Division right now, which is not where you want to be. It's a long climb to get out. Hopes were maybe best case scenario they get themselves in the wild card conversation. I, you know, it's going to be work to get there, but it's, I think it's too soon to pull the trigger on this, don't you? I think so too. And, you know, we mentioned it, it's a month into what seems like a rebuild. You're not really sure how the rest of this season is going to go, much less the next two or three years. Right. I just don't think the Predators really know where they are as a franchise right now, what they have, what they don't, what direction they're headed in. I don't think anybody really does either. 
Uh, we're going to mention this a little bit when we talk about the, the Ducks game tonight, but the Predators, you, you see improvement in a lot of areas from last year. Right. Uh, and then you see some things that maybe just haven't gone right so far. So, you know, the Predators aren't really sure, like, what they even have in a team this year, and they're going to need time to figure it out. And that can change a lot about the direction of the team. Like, let's say, like, Luke Evangelista or, you know, Tomasino comes back in the lineup. Uh, Tommy Novak, they're the ones that start carrying the team and they get hot uh, and they start playing like consistently, like, you know, a, like a key line every week. Maybe that changes Barry Trotz's perspective. It's like, you know, Matt, maybe we don't need to tear this down. Like maybe we have some pieces right here that we can sort of build around. And then when you get to your like when you get to like your Matthew Woods and the Yoakam Kamels, now it's like, OK, we got some we got some top playmakers on this team. Or maybe it goes the other way, and like maybe you know Roman Yossi and Philip Forsberg don't have the same impact they had the past few years. Uh, maybe Soros himself doesn't have the same impact. Maybe some things fall apart. Maybe the Preds start playing worse, and then you have to figure out, okay, like now do we need to take a step back and sort of, I guess, turn this into more of a let's get rid of some key guys and, and start from the bottom up sort of rebuild then that sort of changes the perspective on who's available, like True. what you're looking for in return. So it, it's, I feel like until you can get a sense of, okay, where is this team at? It doesn't make sense to trade arguably the best player on your team. Right. Now, again, that may change at the deadline that may change like at the end of the season when some of the dust has settled and it's like, okay, what were the Nashville predators this season? But until you figure that out, it just seems reckless to yeah. make a move like that just for sake of making a move. Right. And I don't know that you can guarantee that you're going to get back what you're really going to need long term. I agree with you. And remember, this is a franchise that has a brand new head coach who is still learning his players, who is still learning how to utilize these players, how to pull the best game out of them. They're still getting comfortable with a new system. We see that at times when they're unsure, they kind of revert back. So there are still a lot of growing pains I think the Predators need to work through before they pull a trigger on something that is franchise direction adjusting or timetable adjusting at this point. I, I just don't think they have enough information to make that decision, nor do they have enough foresight to understand what they would really want in return. So I am with you. Right. We need a lot more information before we know how smart a move like this would be. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, do you trade for draft picks? Uh, do you right. trade for your cap space? Or do you trade for, you know, do you try to make a trade for like a player that can help you win like right now that you can build around right now? So, I mean, it seems different. And again, um, that's it, the, the situation may change, folks. Like hockey is fluid. A rebuild yeah. is fluid. We're saying right here, it doesn't make sense to trade UC Saros. And, you know, all of the stuff I said about Saros can be applied to Yaroslav Askarov, too. A guy that can, you know, looks like he's developing into somebody that can be like a franchise goalie. Why would you take something, take that person off your roster? Why would you consider him expendable until you figure out where you are? Yes. So that may change. Like the Predators may sit down, have a better idea of what direction they're going, and then have to make some decisions. That may change. But for now, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. And the other thing to add in there, uh, um, what, what's the Oilers? What are the Oilers going to give up? Do, do you do you see anything on the the team that you would be like heck yeah? You know what's so funny is you look at the Edmonton Oilers, you think okay, a trade with the Edmonton Oilers, it's going to be amazing. You could get a really quality piece, but you really, what are they going to give up? Are they going to give up Leon Drysital? Of course not. He's yeah. one of the key pieces that they're in win now. They don't want to get rid of the guys that yeah. they have that are that are making them the win now team. Yeah. So, you know, and 
I mean, let's just be honest here. We already took some picks and we took probably their top prospect when we got Matias, when we traded Matias Ekholm. We got Reed Schaefer. Reed Schaefer was a great bargaining chip. He's ours now. No take backs. So, you know, it's not like. Not doing that great this season. <laughs> we'll just throw that out there. What's that? Not doing that great in Milwaukee this season. Also throwing that out there. You know, so it's like, I'm not sure what Edmonton could put on the table with where Nashville is right now that would make Nashville go, mm, that's going to change the trajectory of where we're at significantly. So, yes, let's make a deal. I, I just don't see what they would have. I mean, would I talk about Connor McDavid coming here? I'll talk about it. Yeah, I don't see the Oilers making that trade. But that's yeah, right. That's it's, a sport conversation. The pieces, like the most attractive trade pieces, are Connor McDavid, Leon yep. Dreisaitl, yep. a big gap, maybe Evan Bouchard, and then another big gap, and the rest are like you know veteran players and right. you know kind of. B C list prospects that you're not going to want to give up the best player in your team for. So it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And, um, and yeah, again, like this may change in a couple of, you know, months from now, we'll see where the Preds are at the deadline. We'll see where the Preds are after the season. And then we can go back to this, but uh, I think that the end of this is we, we probably shouldn't expect uh, a, a goaltending trade for Nashville. It would be shocking. It would, it would be shocking. Yeah. It would be shocking. Uh, you know what would else be shocking is a Predators win tonight <laughs> because they haven't gotten a lot of them at this point. Cool. They're going to get their chance against the Anaheim Ducks. We'll talk about the preview of that game and what the Predators need to do to win tonight uh, coming up in just one second. First, want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by our great friends at FanDuel. So you can score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That is $150 if your team wins. Look, if you've been on the fence and listening to us talk about FanDuel and think, yeah, maybe I want to jump in, now is the time time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options that you can choose from. You can bet on spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. We've got tons of football on the lineup this weekend. You can check out and see what the numbers look like there and place your first bet. Or you can take a look at what they have listed for the NHL games. Got a lot of those coming up tonight on the slate as well. So go and check it out at FanDuel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL season. Again, check out FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, and Nashville Predators versus Anaheim Ducks tonight at Bridgestone Arena. Uh, the second of a nine game in 10 game stretch yeah. at Bridgestone Arena, which is Hey, good, good for the fans here. Welcome home. Uh, when you look at the Ducks, you know, a little bit surprising because they have done fairly well this season. And uh, the underlying numbers don't really support how well they've done. Uh, but they have some really good things going for them this season. And maybe the headline for the Anaheim Ducks this season, maybe the biggest reason they've been doing so well the goaltending is back. What? I know. John Gibson is having a renaissance. And Lucas Tostel, a uh, really good goaltending uh, year as well for him. Yeah, I think this season is a little bit unexpected so far when you kind of think in your mind about the Anaheim Ducks and where they were going to be. When you looked at the Nashville Predators schedule, when it first came out, you look at the November schedule like, oh, Anaheim is one of those games you're like, two points. Friends, this is a very different Anaheim Ducks team than what we thought. They are eight and six, you know, so there's some there's some room here for Nashville Predators to make a move. But this team has really been surprising. And I think you hit the nail on the head. I think goaltending has knocked everybody's socks off. Gibson has been really tough to score on. But they also this is kind of a young team. It almost feels like Anaheim is 
maybe a year ahead of where the Nashville Predators are as far as some of their young players. Now they do have Leo Carlson. He's a new sprout, but mm -hmm. he is off to, you know, a pretty good start for them. He's got six goals and eight points in 10 games. So they have some things that are kind of bubbling already. They're cooking a little bit already. And Anaheim and Nashville, there's always a little bit of sass here. So I think tonight's game is is a good opportunity for the Nashville Predators to do the things well that they did against Arizona. But man, do they have to clean up some other things. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, you look and the Ducks underlying numbers aren't that great, but their record is pretty solid. They found ways yeah. to win games. Uh, the Predators are the opposite of that. Their underlying numbers are not bad. It's certainly better than the last couple of years. Uh, but they just haven't figured out a way to to win. And so yeah. it's almost like, you know, two sort of, I guess, shifty, like unknown sort of variables. Like, do the, are the Ducks really going to keep this up? Are the Preds really going to continue to be this bad coming together? And it feels like this can be kind of a statement game uh, for both teams. Yes. Um, where, you know, the Preds have something to prove. The Ducks want to prove that they, they're they not a illusion. They are as good as their record is this year. And they are moving in the right direction. So both teams, you know, kind of have a lot to play for. Uh, and again, the Ducks, 7-3-0 and oh in their last 10. Uh, this, this is going to be a tough game for the Nashville Predators. So with that in mind, and what's one thing you need to see from Nashville uh, tonight in order to get this win? I think you need to see speed. And that's something that Anaheim has. They play a faster game. And when Nashville came out against Arizona, I think the first period, especially you saw them play that faster style of play. They're going to need to keep up that kind of a pace against the Anaheim Ducks tonight. So for me, it's a fast start, not just as far as quick goal scoring, which would be ideal. Let's not lie, because I think the Predators struggle to keep momentum when they are behind or when things kind of shift on them a little bit score fast but also just fast paced i think they're really going to have to challenge the anaheim ducks when it comes to something like pace mm -hmm. yeah uh, another one for me we always talk about the predators needing to get off to fast starts uh i'm changing that a little bit i'm going to mm -hmm. say the predators need a good middle of the game Come because on. that's going to be their achilles heel yeah, this year, where it's just the the adjustments haven't seemed to be there, it's, especially in the second period. That seems to be where the game kind of gets away from Nashville a little bit. We mentioned the Jets game uh, last week where they just completely fell apart uh, in that second in period second, yeah. and needed that third period to kind of dig themselves out. Uh, that that second period is also when things really started to fall apart against Arizona. Uh, too. A couple of really bad goals given up in, in that one. So if you're the Nashville Predators, yeah, you do need to have a fast start. You need to kind of put the pressure on Anaheim early, get your home crowd, but you need to kind of continue the job. You right. need to find a way to carry that good start into the second period. You need to find a way to adjust and kind of adapt to how the other team is playing, being able to read that. Uh, that's something I think and it comes down to coaching a, a little bit as well. Like you have to be able to figure out what that counterpunch is going to be and be ready to survive it. Uh, and to me, that is is kind of been the Nashville Predators Achilles heel this year. That's something I want to see different uh, today against the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, I really want to see them be able to come out strong in the second period like they did that first game of the season against the Tampa right. Bay Lightning. Yes. And I love what you touched on. You kind of touched a little bit on, you know, being able to manage the mental game as well. And that's something that Andrew Burnett was very upfront about when we talked to him yesterday at practice, you know, talking about what were the mistakes in Arizona and are they correctable? And I want to read what he said. He said, yes, they're fixable mistakes. I thought our energy was high. Our mental energy was low. And it's part of part of it is the hockey gods telling you if you don't show up for two games and you think you're going to show up for one. And when it comes to game time, you're probably going to be sadly mistaken in our business. So a lot of this, I think, is the mental game for the Nashville Predators. It is, okay, you were very frustrated. What are you going to do? Separate the wheat from the chaff, figure out the things you need to do. And like you said, you may have a great first period. What are you going to do in the second period? What are you going to do when Anaheim ties up the score? How are you going to respond? So this game is going to be a lot of uh, mental chess. How are you going to respond to what is happening on the ice in front of you? And, and, 
keep to your game, keep doing what you know you need to do to clean it up. So a lot of this game, I think a lot of the results will be also about mental mistakes and mental focus for the Nashville Predators. Yeah. Uh, something else to keep an eye on. Um, neither Tommy Novak nor Dante Fabro practiced yesterday. Uh, not sure if it was just a recovery day or if there's something yeah. going on there, but uh, we will see before the, the game tonight whether they're both healthy and available. Uh, it is a good old fashioned seven o'clock central puck drop. Yes. Thank God, it's not at BFE o'clock. Uh, thank God that West Coast road trip is over. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with plus minus and a full recap from this game. And where can people find your work? You can find my work online at insidethepreds.com. You can find me on Twitter, X at ANK underscore Mama on Ice. You can read my work at penaltyboxradio.com or follow me on X at underscore NS Morgan. That's going to do it for us on today's Locked on Predators podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen of the day. Back tomorrow with an all new episode. We'll see you then.